Hello friends, welcome to the Londonderry United Methodist Church Worship in Place service on Sunday, April 25th, and my son's birthday, I might add. Happy birthday to me. Not only that, it's Earth Day Sunday, hence my little Earth-like globe here. So I've been sitting here reflecting on Earth Day last year. It was my daughter Bethany's birthday, and as many of you who know Bethany know that she is all about sustainability. It is her life's calling, uh, environment, save the environment, um, clean up where she can, reduce, reuse, recycle. And, and she had been chair of a committee at school who planned a huge Earth Day celebration on campus that year, and they had spent months planning it. Well, of course, as I said, you all know where we were. We were right pretty much in our own homes where you might be right now. And um, when it became clear that it was going to be canceled, she was just devastated by it. So, you know, what do you do to celebrate a 20-year-old's birthday? Um, you make little decorations out of recycled things, I guess. So I started making these little streamers out of magazines. Well, my son, Timmy, really got into it. And he thought about what she would like and what could spruce up her office where she took her online classes. So he looked around the house and he came up with supplies to make little flowers made out of uh, bottle caps and recycled cardboard around the house. He made a bunch of these, hid them all over. He helped me make tons of streamers. And this one was my favorite. Okay, the words are gonna be backwards because of the video, but basically he made the earth, yeah. Yep, he did. So we decorated her office after she went to bed um, the night before. And when she came in the next day, she was thrilled. She just was um, so pleased with the effort and, and with just how it really cheered up her room. And the decoration stayed up all for the rest of the semester. And in fact, quite beyond that, and they weren't that hard for me to find. Let's just put it that way. And I think what was so special to me was, was how much Timmy really got into it and really thought about what would be pleasing to, to his sister. And, and that makes me think of, of what we can do um, with our planet Earth and how God gave us this amazing planet and it would be so pleasing to him if we took care of it, if we really did try to reduce, recycle, and and reuse, and and did our best to just take care of this amazing gift, he would be thrilled. And so with that, I'd like to take that thought of, of pleasing God as we head into our worship service today and join with me now in our um, mission statement together. Loving God, loving people, making a difference. Amen. This is Easter season, the season of new life and a breath of the Spirit. As we enter this time of worship together, may we open our hearts to the renewal of our minds and our spirits. May we dare to let go and dance with renewed vigor as we allow resurrection hope to fill our bodies and souls. Dare to dance with dreamers sing their song, dare to dance their stories, sing out strong, dare to dance with freedom your whole life long, dare to dance again. This Sunday acknowledges that sometimes we are unsure about our steps in this world. For the disciples, even while in their joy at seeing Jesus after the resurrection, they were still disbelieving and wondering. 
we are reminded that even though we may not know our next steps, we can be sure they will come because we are God's beloved children. And so we have steps to follow, those of the resurrected Jesus. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. This is our call. Face this new day, even when you aren't sure. We lift up our heads to meet the day. Get ready for life, for life is all around. We fortify our hearts with compassion and action. If rain still lingers, open the umbrellas of hope and set out anyway. For we are called to dance again. Well, friends, it is time for us to share in our prayer time. No public prayer is ever going to share all the things that are on your hearts, your minds. Know that God is with you. God is with all of us. God's heart is generous. God is indeed listening. We've had a very traumatic Time in our nation and in this world these last weeks. There are many at war, many still insecure of food and shelter, 
and insecure of being able to walk the street without being pulled over by a police simply for being a person of color. And so friends, we need to join our hearts together in prayer. We need to pray our world into a better place. Join me now. Gracious and holy God, we give thanks always and everywhere for your abiding presence. You said, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. And so, Lord, we ask for insight into your peace. Help us to build your kingdom of peace here where we reside, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in this, our congregation, in our nation, and in our world. We ask, O oh God, that your peace would reside with those who are in the midst of war, in the midst of genocide, in the midst of walking miles for water. We pray, O oh God, your peace upon those who are hungering for your hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And as you do so, hear our prayers for an end to gun violence, an end to weapons. We pray, O oh God, especially for our nation and all that has transpired here. Heal our broken hearts, Help us participate in a nation who is overwhelmed with love, with kindness, with civility, with compassion. Lord, in your mercy, let us be a neighbor to one another. Hear us as we pray for those who have come through surgery and who are preparing for surgery, for those who are going through treatment and coming through treatment. Lord, we ask that you would continue to lend your healing touch to their lives, their bodies, their souls. And as you touch their lives, touch ours as well, that we may be healed of all our doubts, our pains, our frustrations. Help us to dance again, O oh Lord. Help us to live in the peace that you have created for this world. For we ask this in the name and spirit of Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is time for us to pass the peace to one another, to those at home. And so as you do so, remember when you are done with someone who is near to you, pick up your phone, text or call. Let somebody not beside you know that the peace of Christ is also with them. Let us now say the peace of Christ be with you and also with you.
It is time for the Young at Heart, a story for all the ages to be had now. Come on, snuggle on in, warm up, come on in. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so glad to be with you this morning. Do you have your umbrella with you? You don't? Well, go get it. Pause the video, go get your umbrella. Yeah. Last week, we added a word, dreams, to our umbrella. And this week, we're going to add a new word, heart melodies. Heart melodies, yes. I want to share with you a few words about someone who knows something about heart melodies. We're talking about dreams, not the kind of dreams that you have at night, but the type of dream that is born in your heart. There's a special man that was living a long time ago named Langston Hughes. He was born over a hundred years ago, um, about the time your mom and dad were born. And he wrote books and plays and poetry he made life better for people who had a lot going wrong in their lives because people treated them unfairly. He wrote 
in a style that he dreamed up all by himself. It was called jazz poetry, jazz poetry. And one of the things he wrote about was dreams. And he set it to music frequently. I want to share with you two of his jazz poetry poems. And you're going to see a picture of Langston Hughes on the screen. Dreams. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. And he wrote another one called The Dream Keeper. I, I like this one. I think we're all meant to be dream keepers. Jesus came into the world to have us be dreaming and working for peace. And so we're keepers of that dream for peace. Bring me all of your dreams, you dreamers. Bring me all of your heart melodies that I may wrap them in a blue cloud cloth away from two rough fingers of the world. Hold fast to dreams, Mr. Hughes tells us. That means hold tight. Don't let go. Hold on tight. This week, Think about what your dream for peace is. Jesus Christ says in the gospel, I leave you my peace. What is the peace that you're holding on to and the dream for peace that you're holding tightly on? And can you make that a melody in your heart? Can you make that peace a melody in some way? Today, on your prayer umbrella, you're going to add the words heart melodies, heart melodies. And every week we're going to be adding a word to our beautiful umbrellas that bring us joy. Now our colorful umbrellas are a symbol of joy. Even when on rainy days we don't feel joy, they remind us of the Spirit of Christ who brings us peace even in the midst of sorrow. So I'd like to ask you now to join me in a repeat prayer. We offer thanks for dreamers true, for they are and all they do. Let us become dreamers too, and bring new life to me and you, just as Jesus does. Amen. Thank you. It's good to see you and be with you again. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. with the Spirit early in the morning and walk with the Spirit throughout the long day. Work and hope for the new life of born and listen to the Spirit to show you the way. Dance with the Spirit early in the morning and walk with the Spirit throughout the long day. Work and hope for the new life of born and listen to the Spirit to show you the way. Dance with the Spirit
Our first reading, A Story for the Ages, from Luke chapter 24, verses 36b through 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Our second reading is from the book of 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. See what love the Holy One has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be, He has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When He is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is our second reading from Micah chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. Let us listen for God's word. But in the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of the mountains. It will be lifted above the hills. Peoples will stream to it. Many nations will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God, so that he may teach us his ways, and we may walk in God's paths. Instruction will come from Zion and the Lord's word from Jerusalem. God will judge between the nations, will settle disputes of mighty nations which are far away. They will beat their swords into iron plows and their spears into pruning tools. Nation will not take up sword against nation. They will no longer learn how to make a war. All will sit underneath their own grapevines, under their own fig trees. There will be no one to terrify them, for the mouth of the Lord of heavenly forces has spoken. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, friends, Jesus calls us into peacemaking and to be a part of the process of peacemaking. That is the nature of the gospel call. It is the nature of what God's prophet Micah is calling us into from Micah chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. And we are called into that peace through our intimate connection to God and to humankind. In the wake of yet more horrific violence in our nation, which is the opposite of peace, we need to be thinking through how it is that we fulfill the prophetic vision of Micah and how it is that we ourselves participate in the process of peace. I want to share with you a word from our book of resolutions. Perhaps some of you have never heard anything about the Book of Resolutions. It is our book of topics that we like to share with the world about what we resolve on certain topics. And today I want to read to you from gun violence and what it is that we resolve. This is on page or paragraph 3428, referring back to our book of discipline, paragraph 162 C and F. Hear these words. Micah's prophetic dream points to a time when all peoples will journey to God's presence so God may teach us God's ways and that we may walk in God's paths. Micah describes God as the final judge and the nations will travel to God's presence out of their desire to live in peace without violence and bloodshed. The stunning imagery of Micah's dream is the transformation of weapons into instruments of harvesting food that occurs after the judgments are handed down to the nations. The transformation is not complete until the nations participate in their own transformation. The work that went into creating the weapons will be matched by the human effort it will take to transform those weapons into peaceful instruments. God does not collect or hide the weapons from the nations, nor does God transform the weapons outside of human effort. The text states that the nations themselves shall bear their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Violence, in so many ways, is fueled by fear and self-protection. Iron plows and pruning tools can be used as weapons, yet in Micah's vision, genuine peace and security are given to all people by God after the weapons of violence are transformed. They shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. Culture, as well as weapons, will be transformed indeed. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Whether it happens in the towns of northeastern Nigeria, a suburb in the United States, the streets of Australia, or an office in France, gun violence has become an all too frightening phenomenon. We need the reality of Micah's vision more than ever. Our book of resolutions. The peace Jesus offered the disciples startled them. Isn't this the case that peace comes tangled up in the mess of our lives, in the mess of our fears, and in the midst of all of our problems. Peace doesn't usually come when all is calm and tranquil and, oh, everybody's feeling great. Peace comes something more holy when it is worked for and sought after. Peace like the weapons of war has to be transformed from our innermost and outermost fears. God does not hide peace from us. Human effort is required, according to the prophet, to bring about peace that we seek after. Peace 
is not the absence of conflict. It is the transformation of conflict into peace. All the great religious traditions of the world recognize, as Jesus did and does today, how peace is inextricably connected to our common bond with one another, not in isolation to one another. On this Indigenous Sunday, when we celebrate the Native Americans who were here before we ever arrived, when we reflect on their roots and the tradition they have lent to us and the violence we have committed against them and therefore against ourselves, we take encouragement from them and from the, and from the prophet Micah and from Jesus. They help us to recognize how our connectedness and our participation with each other brings peace. How Micah and Jesus understood peace is not different from our native indigenous peoples. The native elders met in circles. They did this not just for equity, but also because the center was viewable by every person. It was symbolic as a center, can, the center considered the place of wholeness. It could not be known, that center of wholeness could not be known by one person alone. It had to be known by all people. It took everybody's wisdom to know the way of peace. It was not the wisdom of one. It was not the peace worked out by one, but of many. It took the collective thought of all. The indigenous people have a phrase, all my relations. This is not just a phrase, it is a practice to discover, to name, and to repair the connections that exist between all things, all my relations. Peace is not just for me. It is not just built by me. It is not just for me. It is for all people. It is built with brothers and sisters together. The Lebanese have a similar saying, Ya Ayuni, meaning, oh, my eyes, oh, my darling. Interpreted, this means that in order to see, they need one another. In order to have peace, one cannot be alone. In order to have peace, one needs the other. In one African Bushman tradition, the saying is very similar. I see you exclamation, I am here, exclamation. Beyond words, this is a practice, to be present, to bear witness to each other and, and one another, to life. It is about connection, peace, no matter whether it is from the indigenous peoples or from Jesus or from Micah, is dependent upon each member's wisdom and participation. When we are together and we are working at peace, we can transform the world and bring peace. Truthfully, we may at times wanna do what I wanna do and just sit back and say, God, I have had it. I am weary and I want peace. Please deliver it from the sky. Deliver the peace. Please just make it happen, God. And when it doesn't happen, maybe doubts take over. Is God in control? What's going on here? Doubt. Our scripture talks about the doubts of the disciples. Don't I wish peace was easier than praying it out of the sky? Working through conflict, working for peace takes great effort because it is beating swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. It is not easy work. If we're going, for example, to work out the peace that our Methodist Book of Resolutions talks about, 
we have got to put our human wisdom together and our human hearts and our human efforts, and we're going to have to work at it. To accomplish peace, we have got to work together. Gun violence is a serious problem, and I want to share with you what our Book of Resolutions shares about gun violence and what we are resolved to do about it. This is on page 395 of our most recent book of resolutions. Universal background checks on all gun purchases, ensuring all guns are sold through licensed gun retailers, prohibiting all individuals convicted of violent crimes from purchasing a gun for a fixed amount of time, prohibiting all individuals from restraining order due to threat of violence from purchasing a gun, prohibiting persons with serious mental illness who pose a danger to themselves and their communities from purchasing a gun, ensuring greater access to services for those suffering with mental illness, establishing a minimum age for a gun purchase or possession, banning large capacity ammunition magazines and weapons designed to fire multiple rounds each time the trigger is pulled, promoting new technologies to aid law enforcement agencies to trace crime, guns, and promote public safety. If we're going to accomplish peace, we have to put our human efforts together and transform this conflict we see in our world. The good news today is that God's spirit, God's presence is with us. God has given us the wisdom, the inheritance, the gifts of connection to help us bring an end to this horrific gun violence. God has given us everything we need to bring about peace. Beyond the gun resolutions, we are literally using pruning shears to bring about transformation here at Londonderry United Methodist. We are literally putting pruning shears to use as weapons in our new garden. We are transforming hunger and loneliness by growing vegetables and flowers. And if you wish to join us by building the beds or mulching or helping us seed and plant, please join us for our first organizing meeting this Saturday, May 1st at 10 a.m. out in the back parking lot, all CDC guidelines being followed. This is for informational purposes and to get organized. Peace be with you. Jesus said, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch and see. These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said, you are witnesses to these things. Friends, Go, be gardeners of peace. Beat swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. Go, be peace builders. Amen. It is time for our pastoral prayer. And as we prepare for prayer, we're going to hear our theme song for prayer, Teach Me to Dance. Hear this accompaniment.
and let us pray. For the beauty of the world in all its diversity, we give you thanks, O God, our creator. Thank you for all in our world who work to maintain and conserve the beauty of your diversity, O God. We give thanks this day, especially for all the conservation commissions hard at work for all the young and old alike who are working to reduce, reuse, and to make sure that conservation at home is happening. Together we pray, O oh God, may our gratitude to you fill our days. We need your healing, O oh Holy One, for our troubled planet, for our nation, for all who are struggling in body, mind, relationships, and spirit. We remember those who are suffering. Hear us today as we pray for our nation, troubled as we are, as we learn to undo our institutional racism. Troubled as we are to look at our individual racism. Troubled as we are to look at how we are going against your creation, O God, and destroying your earth. We bring before you the names of those we know to be struggling, preparing for surgery, recovering from surgery, those who are now in grief because a loved one has passed, hear us as we pray and offer these names before you. Let us pray together. Come, O God, and restore our lives. And let us sing together the sung response. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to act with compassion and justice. Teach me to dance with the beat of your heart. Lord, be with each of us now. May the dance of your spirit ever call us to engage with you and with the needs around us. Lead us guide us, surround and fill us. Let us pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. For we pray this all in the name and spirit of Christ, our resurrected Lord, he who brought us peace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now come to that time where we want to thank you all for uh, delivering your your gifts, your resources, your donations to the church and in paper check, in um, all the various ways, PayPal and uh, other electronic means of supporting our church. It's so very, very important, especially during this time apart. So we thank you. Jesus called his disciples witnesses to the possibility of resurrection. 
the world is in need of continued resurrection to new life. We are called to be witnesses to this journey, to newness by offering our resources and our energy to the work of justice and love through our offering today. Amen. Our service is ended, but our service in Jesus' name is just beginning. We have heard of peace from dreamers, both past and present, and now it's our job to go out and restore the world in peace, the peace of Christ, the peace of dreamers. Go forth into God's grace, the strength of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the dancing spirit and may that dancing spirit carry you forth in ways that are new and evolving and ways that are comforting. Amen. <laughs>